If you remember back in 1978, this was before the Edmond Postal Massacre. This was before the Murrow bombing. The city had never seen anything like it, and the three almost got away. July 1978, one of Oklahoma City's darkest days for that time. Six people were working their shift at the Sirloin Stockade when at 10.45 p.m., the unthinkable armed gunman wrestled them into a meat freezer and shot them, murdered in cold blood. Ruby Salzman got the call. About four in the morning, the phone rang. It was the news of the killings. We knew that David was working that night. David Salzman is Ruby's nephew. She arrived on the scene of chaos. Five left dead in the freezer. The six would die at the hospital and the killers, they had vanished. You'll remember these cows were in front of sirloin stockades. The one there that night saw everything, but there were no cameras and no cell phones to capture any of it. It was 1978. For months, police searched. We covered the story in depth. We talked to investigators, family members, and the public asking this question. Who would kill these people and why? We will leave no stone unturned to apprehend these killers. Then, January 3rd, 1980, reports show one of the killers, Roger Dale Stafford, called OSBI anonymously. He was drunk. He fingers his brother Harold Stafford and by then estranged wife Verna, saying they were responsible. Report show upon investigation, police figured out Harold had been killed in a motorcycle crash in Tulsa a week after the stockade murders. Verna, they eventually found in Illinois, she turned over on Roger Dale. He always denied any involvement. I never killed no one. Eventually, he was sentenced and put to death in 1995. She is serving a life sentence in prison. I do regret all the pain and suffering I have caused so many people. That apology can't change what happened 40 years ago. It moves on, but we tend to not move on. Ruby says after David's death, his parents moved back to Tennessee, and now much of the family has passed. But those left behind all remember. You just don't forget. You do try to forgive, though, because it only affects you if you don't forgive. Every few years, Verna comes up for parole. Ruby's daughter, Dana, David's cousin, has been there and watched Verna. She was just sitting over at the desk writing on a piece of paper. Now, the family has to call the parole board to find out about Verna's parole hearings. That's because the old system no longer lists parole dates, so victims' families must make sure they are registered to hear about a convict's potential parole. It is a crime they nearly got away with had it not been for that drunken call. Ruby told me she hopes she outlives Verna, and to this day, Ruby can only figure one reason they did it. They did it just out of being mean. You know, reports show they did get away with some cash, something like $1,000, but you're talking about six people who, it, they died out of this. Just for $1,000. Mm -hmm. did want to ask you, when was Verna up for parole again? Well, she was up for parole last year. She was denied, okay. but and she's not up for another couple of years. In all